thanks for having me today. Um, really inspired to see uh, Fox, Gia, and Akene's work earlier. Um, there's like some interesting overlaps between what we do at SoSo and their work. Um, when I was putting the talk together today, I thought that it would be, so I started with uh, a pitch deck that we use. And I was like, oh no, this is wrong. But then I thought, oh, this is a panel on um, entrepreneurship and design. So I thought it'd be interesting to talk about the business side of what we do and kind of how we became a business and, and work with creativity. So we got our start here at MIT as undergrads and we all ended up working um, at a museum exhibition design firm as our day job. And we, we moonlighted as uh, audiovisual artists. And we were basically, you know, I think it became the seed of what we do now, which is to use the tools of design and technology to solve problems creatively. Um, and in this case, uh, to create an artwork, which is something that I think a lot of our work happens to do. I think we call ourselves a design firm, but really a lot of the work looks like art to a lot of people. And so we kind of towed that line. And this was a, um, a performance we did in 2008. In three cities for the presidential debates, we did a live remix of each debate where we actually took the television signal and we brought in the video and the closed captioning so we knew everything they were saying and the audio and we deconstructed it and in real time put it back together to kind of reveal these patterns that you can't see when you're just watching the material on television. Um, so fast forward uh, today, we've been in existence as, a, as an official company for 10 years, been working together for like 15 years. And the way we describe what we do is creating sensory spaces through design and technology. Um, so it's, it's an interesting thing for us, the, the practice forms so organically from just like working with these different tools and doing experiments. And so it's always been an interesting thing for us to define what it is we do and to speak about the value of what we do. So that second line about driving differentiation and lasting engagement through a new strategic approach to physical and digital spaces. It's like um, a whole mouthful of very brandy speak, but I think um, we're you know, in the business of just kind of trying to express the value of what we do to a lot of different people. Um, our clients are all over the place. We started doing a lot of work for technology companies because a lot of our work does involve data and kind of distilling really complex data sets. And uh, so we've you know, done projects for, HB, uh, for Qualcomm. We do a lot of work for them out in San Diego. And uh, recently in the last like five or six years, we've started to do a lot of work for real estate developers. Um, and kind of using this idea of bridging physical and digital space uh, to create installations in their buildings. Um, the way we talk about what we do is like in the construction industry, there's this thing called like a design, design build shop. And that is kind of part of our process and how we like to work with our partners. Like really from the beginning, understanding their goals and working our way through design processes and kind of working with the whole extended network of partners to fabricate and build these things and to continue the relationship and, and evolve as time goes on. Um, so I'm gonna take you through a few projects uh, that I took out of our portfolio and just talk a little bit about the, the context and their reason for being. Um, so this was uh, a piece, you can see this piece, it's kind of around the corner in Kendall Square. Local real estate developer had this big beautiful building um, and the atrium was like, really just kind of inhuman, this gorgeous light-filled space, but like reverberant, you couldn't really hang out in there, it wasn't comfortable. So they wanted to create some kind of art installation that would make the space more human and, um, and also represent the work going on in the building. So the seed of this piece was a sculpture that can disappear and reappear kind of out of thin air to preserve all this beautiful natural light and sight lines. And then we started to think about what the story might be behind it and we had done a bunch of work with flocking. It's kind of a, um, a, uh, an algorithm that you find a lot of times in computational work like this. And we, we looked at it as this metaphor for collaboration in science. So here you can see the, uh, the software that drives the piece. There's these invisible birds that are just flying around the atrium all day and triggering these origami elements. Uh, here it is in fast forward. So, so a piece like this is like really, it's addressing some real problems. There's a brief here, it was to kind of make this space more human, but also to, to represent the, the work that's going on inside of the building. So there's this kind of like brand storytelling aspect to it. Um, and the coolest part about this was the day we turned it on, I was just sitting there and the building was empty because it was a holiday and my like heart just, my heart rate just totally slowed down. And like, it, 
when you're in the, in, the, in the room, like it slows your breathing. You start to like empathize with these origami things. And, uh, and so in that way, it was really successful um, for the space. So another piece we did uh, down in DC was, the brief for this was uh, a think tank that's been around for like six, over 60 years, um, Center for Strategic and International Studies. They wanted a piece in their new, the atrium of their new headquarters to represent the work they do. And so we uh, looked at kind of the, the types of data that they were working with and came up with this notion of building uh, a, a chandelier that could show abstract data sets. So this is uh, this kind of very like abstract form made out of these um, acrylic illuminated cylinders. And when you come underneath the sculpture, it kind of coalesces into a map of the world. And we're showing different World Bank data sets on it. So we looked at GDP growth, uh, water scarcity and energy usage, and each one has like a kind of signature animation. So as a data visualization, it's pretty bad because you just, what, is it, what does that mean when you look up at it? But the way that it works is it becomes this conversation piece for people at the think tank. Visitors come and they could tell a story about the work and kind of relate it to the sculpture. And so kind of riffing off of the form of that last sculpture, last year we were asked by another local developer uh, to help out refreshing this one space um, in the Hancock Tower across the river. And this building is so, you know, a very corporate building, um, a lot of like financial people in the building, and so wanted to come up with something that would actually speak to that audience. And so we're always looking for interesting ways of building on the types of behaviors that people already do in their day-to-day -day life. And so in this case, we took the behavior of texting and created this light sculpture that you can text. There's a number on the wall, and as you walk past it, you can text message anything to it, and it creates this totally unique color palette. And so it's this super simple interaction that it's a secret between you and the sculpture, although we do have a, a little screen in our studio that shows us everything that people are texting. And it's like, it's like a confessional. Like people walk in and they're like, you got this. They like text all these little messages to it. Um, but it just also kind of gives people control over some aspect of the architecture in this really simple way. And finally, this last piece, um, we were actually neighbors with Skylar in this show. Uh, this is last year. The Cooper Hewitt um, Smithsonian Museum of Design commissioned us to uh, adapt this piece that we had created. So as part of my thesis work at the Media Lab, I did all this work with uh, tactile composition, like actually creating experience, uh, experiences for the sense of touch. And so it's this really like simple piece that has a series of chairs and headphones, we actually adapted it for, um, for deaf and blind people to be able to use. So it has projections on the floor and then the, a voice that speaks in the headphones. But it's called a seated catalog of feelings. And you sit in it and one by one you hear um, something described and then you feel it um, in the butt of the chair coming up as this very expressive series of vibrations. And they kind of range from really the macabre, like the last nail in your coffin, um, as you can see there, getting humped by a poodle. Uh, there's, there's this sort of, we got a few complaints from some families, I had to remove some of them. Um, but the inside of Miles Davis's trumpet, it's like this, it's this really, it's almost like a virtual reality for your sense of touch, this lo-fi virtual reality, and a way of making you small, making you big, and kind of transporting you just through your sense of touch and your imagination. Ah, thanks so much.